Well, you hear him say, yeah, working out in the morning, you build more muscles, you just, you something like that. Today, I'm going to be debunking the five most common bodybuilding myths. Um, these are things that I hear people talking about all the time that are just complete and utter bogus. And it's really, honestly, some of these are, are things that keep people from actually making gains. And some of these are just kind of harmless mistakes where someone was maybe told something by um, a mentor or someone in the gym who's kind of like a bro science guy or something. And um, they're just being led down the wrong In no particular order, here is the number one bodybuilding myth. This might be the one that I have heard the most in my life. And it is that unused muscle or, you know, if you stop working out or you eat junk food or whatever, your muscle is going to convert to fat or turn into fat. And this is just, I don't even know, I don't even know why someone thought this was a thing. Um, muscles are just structurally and anatomically different than fat. It's like your bones cannot turn into skin. It's just not, it's not how that works. Your, your, your muscles cannot turn into fat. Um, if you stop working out for an extended period of time, you're probably going to lose muscle and gain fat. So I understand how someone who's a novice can make the mistake of assuming that their muscle is turning into fat, but in reality, they are just eating in a caloric surplus, so they're gaining fat and they are not working out, so they're losing muscle. And that's called muscle atrophy. And muscle atrophy happens anytime that you're not giving your muscles a proper stimulus to grow or to stay the same size, or anytime you're eating in a caloric deficit and your body simply cannot keep up the size of your muscles for the amount of energy or food you're intaking into your system. So that's the first myth that's debunked. You absolutely will never have your muscles turn into fat ever, ever. In fact, if you don't eat enough, you'll lose fat and muscle. So that is just something that if anybody ever tells you, just kind of recognize that they probably don't really know what they're talking about or maybe just help them out and be like, hey, that's actually not true because they are different structures and they can't just be interchanged. This is one that um, is actually really interesting and I wouldn't even say uh, is like the prior myth and that it's not entirely completely false, but it is false nonetheless, um, at least in the application that most people uh, say it and use it. And that is that you are going to build more muscle by training in the morning. And now I know you're like, oh, but like all these people say it, you know, like these influencers and whoever, bodybuilders maybe. Um, I know a lot of old school guys say this, right? Like I've heard Arnold say this. Like if you watch the bodybuilding.com like blueprint series that Arnold did, you'll, you'll, I'm pretty sure there's something in there where you hear him say, yeah, working out in the morning, you build more muscles, you just, you something like that. Um, this is not true. The reason why people say this is because in the morning, your testosterone peaks and you have other hormones in your body that peak in the morning. Um, and, or at least this is one of the times that they peak throughout the day. So people are going to assume that because you have increased testosterone, which we know is an anabolic muscle building hormone, that you're going to have increased gains if you work out in the morning because you have more testosterone to build muscle. This is not how that works. Uh, if you're building muscle, it is for a prolonged period of time after your workout. You're not building muscle during your workout. I mean, in theory, you may be a tiny bit, but after you work out, you are going to be repairing your muscles for 24 hours minimum, 48. And if you're doing a very intense workout, 72 hours, and it honestly could even go longer than that. So you having an, a spike in hormone levels for a few hours after your workout is not really going to translate to any type of gains at all. Um, the reason why I said that this is partly false is because there haven't 
really been any studies done on the long-term, like extreme long-term effects of working out at that specific time every day. Um, and that's very hard to do because there are a lot of other variables over a long period of time that can influence training. Um, so maybe in, in years we're talking, you might have a slight, slightly better chance of building more muscle for working out in the morning. But for someone who's just not like a professional bodybuilder, maybe it's really not going to make enough of a difference for you to even notice in the mirror. So that is the number two myth. You absolutely will not build more gains if you work out in the morning. The third myth, and this is something that is probably the most common one that people believe. And I see people who are legit athletes doing this. Do not stretch before exercise. If you're doing resistance training, especially heavy resistance training, or especially if you're training for strength, do not stretch. Do not stretch. Oh, but what if I get injured? Do dynamic stretches. Do a warm up, right? Okay. So a dynamic stretch is something like doing, doing leg swings like this or doing arm rotations. You're warming up the muscle. You're getting a little bit of a stretch, but you're not getting that full length and stretch that you get from static stretching where you're stretching out the muscles for a long period of time and they're becoming more elongated temporarily at least. What happens when you do static stretching before lifting, your muscles lose elasticity. So this means that just like a rubber band, if you stretch it too far, it might not be able to stretch back as much the second time, you're gonna lose elasticity in your muscle. And you think, well, that might be a good thing, you know, because I'm not as tense. Maybe, but what you're really going to end up doing is losing strength and losing stamina because of this elasticity loss in your muscles and you're not gonna be able to lift as much weight. A lot of studies and a lot of research has shown that there is an absolute zero benefit to static stretching before resistance training as far as injury prevention. So what you really should be doing is if you're, let's say for example, doing a barbell bench, to get ready for that, instead of stretching, stretching out your chest, stretching out your triceps, what you really want to be doing is hit the bar, hit 10 reps on the bar, and slowly progress in weights until you feel warm, until the blood is flowing to the muscles, and your joints are ready to take on a higher weight. Don't do static stretching, please. That's the third myth. Static stretching prior to resistance training is not good for you. Don't do it. The fourth myth, and this is one that it just drives me crazy because so many people think this and there's this big thing right now of people believing that um, volume is just ridiculous and that you should really just be doing one to two sets of just extremely intense exercise. But it's, it's not ridiculous. It works. You can do that. But the great thing about resistance training and building muscle is you can actually do a whole bunch of stuff to build muscle. As long as your diet is under control and as long as you're getting enough recovery and you're actually putting in the intensity, you don't have to lift heavy ass weights if you don't want to. And you don't have to lift light ass weights for a bunch of reps if you don't want to. A lot of research has shown that you will get the near exact same progress for hypertrophy from lifting five reps all the way up to about 25 to 30 reps. So if you're someone that enjoys lifting light weights more and you like doing higher reps and you get a better pump, go for it. Go for it, dude. That you're, you're, you're good. If you're someone who likes lifting heavy weights and you're like, fuck that. I don't want to do all those reps. I don't want to be sitting there doing a set for like two minutes. Don't do it then. Hit your, hit your, lift up some heavy ass weights, man. Ronnie Coleman was the greatest bodybuilder of all time and he lifted some heavy ass weights, right? But Jay Cutler, is another bodybuilder who is very competitive with Ronnie Coleman. He's one of the greatest. And he was very against lifting heavy weights like that. Of course, he lifted heavy weights just in general, but proportional to his strength, he was not really an advocate of lifting the heaviest weights possible to the point of failure. So keep that in mind the next time you're lifting, you can really do 
any type of uh, rep scheme that you like between 5 to 25 to 30 reps, just make sure you're getting the right level of intensity. So that's a third myth. You do not have to lift heavy ass weights to build muscle. The third and final myth is the one that makes me so mad the most. And people don't believe you. Like they just think this is true. Bro, you need to have a protein shake right after your workout, bro. Bro, don't you know the anabolic window? You're in the anabolic window, dude. You gotta have that protein or else your muscles are, you're not gonna get any gains, bro. This is not true. Like we talked about earlier about your muscles recovering for an extended period of time after lifting weights. This is the same case for your diet and nutrition. There have been a lot of research that's done on people who do intermittent fasting, on people who eat five meals throughout the day, and they really find that as long as throughout the entire day, you're hitting the right protein, you know, the right macronutrient goals and the right calorie goals that you're going to be building the same amount of muscle as someone that is just eating super frequently or, you know, someone who's, who maybe does intermittent fasting, they only eat for three hours throughout the day. Just make sure you're focusing on hitting that right amount of protein, you know, typically about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Make sure you're hitting that every day and make sure you're hitting that caloric maintenance or surplus and you'll be building muscle. You will be building muscle. Um, don't worry about the anabolic window, right? There, there, there may be some type of benefit to having protein um, directly after a workout for a very, very long period of time, um, taking very high amounts of protein and if you're training extremely intensely, that may be the case. But for most people who are working out recreationally, slamming protein right after your workout is going to make almost zero difference, almost zero difference. And we really have tons of research and tons of studies showing that there is no such thing as an anabolic window, right? So just keep that in mind next time you're working out or next time someone says, hey bro, the anabolic window, bro. You gotta, you gotta get your protein shake in, man. Just keep in mind that that is not the case and you're perfectly safe to not eat protein directly after your workout. Just make sure you're hitting your proper macronutrient and calorie goals throughout the day. So that has been five of the most disgusting bodybuilding myths I have ever heard. Um, I appreciate you watching, especially if you make it this far. Uh, like and subscribe would be appreciated and uh, stay tuned for more informational content and more uh, you know, workout vlogs and you know, just fun stuff.